In this video, we're going to look at the basic operation of the cylindrical grinder. It is an OD ID grinder. This is the outside wheel. Now, the inside head normally mounts here. It kind of gets in the way. We don't use it much, so it is off the machine over to the right. So it's typically now just an OD, outside diameter grinder. So I just want to show you how we would set it up just to grind a standard part. So we want to use the, the five seat collet. We've got a ground center in here. It's hardened ground. Clean the threads, clean the collet, clean inside the spindle. And we'll slide this in and then we'll tighten up this collet on the back. And I'll show you in just a moment what this looks like. So there's our 5C collet inside of it uh, with a center. And uh, when we turn between the centers on the grinder, and we always want to turn between centers unless we have to use a chuck for some reason, then we have a chuck that goes in it. But we put our uh, part on here like this. We also use center saver inside of the dead center on the right. It is a dead center. This side does not spin, so we put this end on here, pull this back, load it up, and you see how the handle points right to this corner, and there's a little black arrow underneath of that. So this is called a foot stock. Uh, it puts just the right amount of pressure when you get it on this corner. Now if you have your part chucked up and the handle's right there, there's no pressure at all on it, so that's not a good thing. We don't want our part flying out. So we pull it way back, load it, and we may have to loosen these two screws here and move the foot stock forward and backward. Uh, but in any case, we want this handle pointing about at this corner. And when we start the wheel up, we want to spin it a couple times just to make sure there are no big chips in the wheel. Uh, you never know who left it in what condition, we don't know. But when you do start the wheel, we want to be off to one side. So. This button right here will start the wheel. Typically we let it run for about five or 10 minutes just to warm everything up. Now, since the PLC is broke in this machine, uh, this button here that says cool it, basically starts the spindle. And you turn it, hit it again and it turns it off. The spindle button doesn't work. Okay, so we've got a problem with it. It typically will traverse grind, plunge grind, ID grind. We can program it to do all of this neat fancy stuff, but since it's broke, we just use it to grind OD. So this starts your spindle right here. All right. We'll turn the spindle off. And I'll show you how we lock down the chuck. So if we want to take the part out of the chuck, if we want to take the 5C collet out of the spindle, uh, we merely take this handle, pop it forward, and you can see there's a little key right here, push that down, unscrew it, and it's screwing off of the 5C collet. Give it a little tap, and it will pop the 5C collet right out. Slide it back in. And you see how it pushes in and out. So we want to screw that on the back of the 5C collet until it bottoms out. Then we're going to back it up just a little bit. Okay. And when we back it up just a little bit, we lock it down. Make sure that we can lock this tight. Otherwise, your 5C collet is not locked down until this is kicked back. And when we want to make sure that we're running true and not getting a taper in our part, we'll put a test bar in the machine like this. And you can see we have a lathe dog. We have something to drive the lathe dog. Uh, we have our handle setting at this corner. And I set the indicator up onto this head here and bring it over and touch the outside of my part. And when I run my table left and right you see the indicator doesn't move and just to make sure the indicator is not bottomed out we always want to make sure <laughs> our indicator is working so we move it left and right it looks good there 
I would take it further, and if I need to get it better, I would put a test indicator that reads in half thousands or fifty millions. But if you notice this little indicator down here, it is on zero. So when we loosen these two screws, and then there are two on the other end, we can actually tilt the table. So right now we're running straight across, exactly where it should be. This indicator is on zero. My little dial here is pointing to zero degrees, and I'm showing zero run out right now, okay? So we're ready to cut straight, but let's set it up to cut a taper such as our cap 40. All right, now we're ready to put, this is actually a factory made cat 40 tool holder. We're gonna put it in a three tall chuck, which is not the best situation, but as we're making our cat 40, we don't have it bored out yet. So we really can't locate anything off that center hole. So this is the best situation we've got. We put a plug in the end with a center hole in it. And remember to cock the handle at about, I don't know what angle that is, point it to the corner. And don't forget to, whenever you put the chuck in it, you're gonna tighten this ring here. You can see there, when you tighten the ring, you're gonna clamp that down so it won't unlock. And then make sure you lock it back like that, and it'll be good to go. But now we have to move this, we have to tilt this table to make that cut, all right? So what we have to do is loosen this boat, this boat, loosen these two, and then we're gonna move this. Instead of pointing at zero, it's gonna be pointing back here at this little dot, which is way back there. So I'll show you how we're gonna do that. Once these are loosened, we can turn this handle here, and you can see it moving slowly but surely. And then we're gonna move it until this gets all the way back to there. All right, now I've got the table slanted. As you can see, it goes way back there right at the dot and that gets us in the ballpark try not to bump the indicator that's how we get back home to zero make sure those screws are loose and there you can see how i've got the indicator set up make sure it's hitting the part on the side not high or low it'll throw it off it's got to be right in the center and there you can see how we have the indicator set up we move it to the right move it to the left and we have no movement on the indicator and it's got to be on the back side remember so that's how we set it up to grind our taper make sure you have those two bolts loose there those two bolts there that allows the table to turn and uh, now we're ready to take that part out and put our part in and grind that cat 40. All right, so now we have the cat 40 that we just made. Um, it's ready to be bored on this left side to the three quarter. We'll do that in the milling machine, but all we wanna do is grind this paper now. So remember when we start the wheel, we wanna be off to one side, start the wheel up. We'll typically let it run for just a little bit, uh, maybe five minutes or so to warm everything up. Remember the handle pointed to this corner puts just the right amount of pressure on it. That is a dead center, so we want to make sure we have center saver in that hole because it creates friction. We have this little plug that we made to go in this end. So now let's go ahead and start our part. That's rotating pretty good. We're going to move it on up. Alright, it just barely, barely touched. So now we're going to move it to the right and the left. And it's normally not going to hit all the way around at first because we did cut it on the lathe. Don't forget. Now I don't have coolant on it just so you can see everything, but just take it nice and easy. We're going to cut up right next to that edge there. So this little eighth inch edge, 125 thousandths, I think it was, to the edge. We blued it, put a mark there. We're gonna grind right up next to that edge. And it's okay to be a little wavy. It's not a perfect part. Now on this dial here, 
Well, she probably cannot see. We're gonna go clockwise just two marks each time. Okay, so we're gonna move it in about two, two marks. Each each mark is two tenths. So we just went in about about um, four tenths, which it doesn't like it doesn't look like we moved much. I think we might have just got the slop out of it. There we go. Now we're just gonna lightly go over it. Right up next to that edge. Now don't hit that shoulder. Just take it right up next to that edge, move it in about one or two little marks on our the wheel on the right. So each mark is two tenths, we just move to four tenths. And we're just gonna lightly go over it. We just wanna make sure we're cutting all the way around the part. And it looks like it's doing a great job. And we're gonna move it back off of the part now. Now we're ready to take it out, uh, bore it. Once it's bored and it's deburred, then we heat treat it. And then if we wanna come back and re-grind this, we'll set the machine straight to, to grind these. We'll grind them here, we can grind the nose. We can turn it around and point it the other direction. And the way we usually do that is we'll have uh, something like this. Here's a factory made part. And we can slide an end mill in this end here. Tighten the set screw and we can put that, it's got a center hole in it. We can put that with a lathe dog on it on this end. Um, that, now we can hold it between centers and we can grab here, here, we can turn it around this way if we want to do that. It's probably easier like this. You've got a little bit to put your leg dog on, put your set screw in it. You can grind this, grind this, and then set it back at the angle to grind this again after heat treating. It looks really nice, keeps everything concentric. So that is a good way to do that. Just take a three quarter end mill, slide it in, tighten the set screw up. You've got your center hole there. Here is a pull stud. It's got a center hole in the end of that, or you can use that plug whichever is most convenient for you. The key is not to take too much, just one or two tick marks at a time, two tenths or four tenths at a time per pass uh, does a wonderful job on it.